What's up, everybody? Welcome to Gaming Without Parole. My name's Brian Paul, and sitting across from me is the opposite of ostentatious, Mike Zeller. Yep. Sometimes ostentatious. Ostentatious. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm dressed a little nicer today, because I just came from work, so... This is another one of our evening broadcasts. Am I, am I on camera? I feel like I'm kind of, like, hanging off the side there. That's, a, that's, that's how it looks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it did yeah. kind of look like I was, like, cropped in the middle. Yeah, you're fine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> now that yeah. you're hovering over the table, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just like, Ooh. as long as you're comfortable, yeah, I'm always um, comfortable. I'm, I'm, that's totally not true because these chairs are awful. Welcome to Gaming Without Parole, <laughs> yeah. Mike. Um, for anybody who hasn't seen this podcast before, and for those who have, <laughs> what do we do here on Gaming Without Parole? Well, originally, when we started this, uh, our intent was to create a podcast where a podcast I should I should say um, not a video cast where we would talk about being very interested in video games and also normal people you know I, f- I feel like most most of the time when people create gaming media it's like these game obsessed weirdos um, and then I realized or we both I think realized after we taped a few of these that that's because the only way you're capable of making these is if you're a game obsessed weirdo, and yep. we are no exception. So now we just kind of, um, at least for me, this is just where I purge all of this stuff, so I don't bring it up at work or with family or women that I'm trying to date yep. throughout the week. Uh, people at work ask me how the podcast is, uh, so I do have to talk about it sometimes. <laughs> it's it's. Forcefully pulled out of me. No, I talk about gaming all the time. (laughs) They're just like swarming, like, Ryan, we gotta know how the show is going. No, I talk about video games all the time, and that's because, um, that's because it's all I do. Uh, I'm either eating or sleeping, uh, doing the podcast, editing the podcast, or playing video games. Uh, and, and so since editing the, talking about editing the podcast, uh, is not fun on the podcast. (laughs) That's, we should have one episode where it's just like you going through the editing process of the previous show. It'd be awesome. It'd be the worst thing well, ever. Well, I just like slowly nod off. Joby's already like just asleep on the floor. Yep, no Joby today. Yeah. Um, no. so some of us have to work. What a dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, although, uh, with any luck, we're going to have uh, a nice return guest next week uh, on our normal Sunday morning podcast. Yeah. Uh, I, I won't say his name because he might not show up. And by morning you mean afternoon. It is. It's morning. <laughs> it's for, morning for Brian. <laughs> yeah, for the rest of the world it's yeah, almost bedtime. Yeah. Mike, we have a we have a special special podcast this week. I feel like we should we should we can skip the news. Okay. We'll we'll let it all pile up. And then on Nothing su- interesting. And happens. then on Sunday we will we'll talk about it all. Like we'll just kind of just, we'll, just pound through it. We'll, 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 we can blast through it. We can pound and blast through the news uh, in a very sexually infused. Yeah, this is getting really erotic in here. It is. I, I I didn't even take off my pajamas because I found out that I have nothing to do today. Because <laughs> YouTube does not allow nudity. <laughs> right, right. If that was the case, uh, definitely would have gone with much less. Yeah, the Tony show would have been very different. Oh, the Tony show. Mm. Um, how's Tony doing? He's good. He's good. I actually okay. My microphone is definitely like drifting Going downwards. <laughs> yeah. Sp- yeah. Speaking of sexually charged, um, nope, <laughs> no, it's still. I shouldn't have adjusted it before. Nope. nope. Um, I, had it, I had it all set to go. Yeah. Tony. Yep. Tony is doing he, v- very well. He is doing well. Yeah. He. I was at. He. He had a show the other. The other week with. Um, <laughs> perfect, and, <laughs> and with a little smooth editing, nobody will notice. Um, but yeah, he's he's doing really good. He uh, he had his uh, show, his his band, um, or the band he's playing with, uh, the Left Bank, which you may remember from the '60s, having a few hits. Yeah, he sang he sang one of the hits, uh, a, a line yeah, or two. Yeah, from yeah, the yeah, last yeah. time he was here. Yeah, um, um, that's great. Yeah, um, that's good. And you went to see the show. I did. Yeah. How was it? It was it was good. It was good. They yeah. they uh Did John go with you? No, he didn't. He was planning on going, but he wasn't feeling well, which apparently seems to be going around these days cuz yeah. you said you're not feeling well. I, I haven't was... felt well for 6 weeks. So it might be a podcast thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's it's just this room cuz it's all 
claustrophobic and just it just incubates illness. Yeah, and anyone who comes here, I, um, I I give a full kiss on the mouth. Yeah, uh, yeah just to make sure they leave unhealthy. Yeah, it's awful every week. Yep. I just I don't know why I put up with it. So, what we're doing this week uh, is is different. Uh, we used to, we used to do topics of the week, topic one topic a week. We blast through the news and then we talk about one thing every week, um, and. I feel like this is topical and weekly. <laughs> okay, so so something happened this week. Uh, uh, Vanillaware announced that they are going to uh, digitally remaster and, and redraw and reanimate uh, Odin Sphere, a PS2 classic. And they're going to release it on Vita, they're going to release it on PS3 and PS4 in digital and physical form. Nice. Yeah, that's, yeah, I can't believe I have to buy three games out there. <laughs> Unbelievable. That's going to be a real bitch. It is. Um, but but that, that sort of, uh, I think, sparked a conversation. And that conversation is, why are we still making games for the PS3? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and almost almost more questionable, why are we still making games for the Vita? Because um, Vita is such a failure as, to, as, as a platform goes that it, it's kind of mind-boggling that any company is able to profit off of these games. Yeah, and it's a real bummer, too, because I feel like it it started to get good, and then it just kind of, like, collapsed. Well, that's the public perception, right? The public perception is, uh, PS3's dead, Vita's dead, or never was alive. Yeah. Uh, but that's kind of what we're talking about this week. What we're talking about uh, are sort of uh, these uh, post-mortem releases, for uh, mostly for PS3, that's sort yeah, of yeah. I mean, what that's I what focused I focused on. on. <laughs> um, but as I was going through, I also noticed that there are. Um, I, I I just kind of went through the motions. I, I I found all the Vita games that are still coming out, all the PS3 games that are still coming out, uh, some some multi-platform games that are still coming out for uh, for the PS3 long long after a very successful launch of the PS4. Now, am I right in saying that this November will be two years that the PlayStation 4 has been out? Uh. I think it's a year. <laughs> no, isn't, isn't it just a that year? That can't be right. Hold on. I don't think because we've only been we've been. When when did the PlayStation Four come out? <laughs> this is. No, we're just gonna do this. Yeah. Siri, you dumb bitch. <laughs> but just let me check that. Is it? The answer is January fourteenth, nineteen ninety seven. No. Nope. <laughs> Holy shit! No. Nope. When did the PlayStation Four come out? It still says PlayStation FOR. You're a fucking moron, Siri. Well, we know when the PlayStation came out. There's going to be one bitch of an edit job. Yeah, that's all right. Um, but see, it's this, been out for a while. It's no, been out for is, long this enough. This is important. <laughs> it really is. Are you going to dub over yourself? It's like, when the PlayStation 4 came out in 2013... Okay. Welcome back. <laughs> the PlayStation 4 came out in uh, North America, November 29, 2013. Oh, okay. So we are coming up on the two-year anniversary of the PlayStation 4. Uh, most other consoles, uh, most other prior legacy consoles, however you want, whatever you want to call it, the PlayStation 3 should be dead by now. Yeah. Uh, I mean... When the PlayStation 3 came out, it was super expensive. It, it didn't catch on right away, or for a while. Yeah. So I can understand why PlayStation 2 games were still coming out. Like, yeah, and the PlayStation 2 was also like one of the best-selling systems of all time. I mean, it, it had a commanding victory in the previous console generation, where the PS3 definitely was not the victor this time around. Right. Absolutely. Uh, so, so this is this is it's a little bit surprising um, and a little bit reassuring. Yeah, that we have a lot of these games to talk yeah. about today. Oh yeah. Uh, did, did you want to start us off? And sure. Talk, and talk sure. about the first ones that you um, found. Yeah, I I didn't put together a particularly huge list because I did go. You know, we had had this conversation. Yeah. I went through you know all of the PS3 releases for say the last five or six months and, you know, the next few months going oh, forward. Oh, good, good. I, I didn't go back too far, so okay. maybe you should take us back. Okay, good, good. Because <laughs> I mostly focused on going back. Because there's a lot of stuff coming out and that has come out. 
it was not quite of the quality that I remembered. I mean, there, there's there's a lot of dog shit out there. Okay. Um, a lot of just kind of generic uh, Japanese RPGs. Um, sure. You know, a lot of Idea Factory, a lot of Gust. Yep. <laughs> um, but I'll all right, I'll hit up which I'll talk extensively about. In nice. <laughs> oh, I didn't even write down. I tried to write down the dates for most of them. Um, but so this is going back kind of a ways. Yeah. But. Um, Back in December, a kind of important release came... I mean, I'm going back this far because I think it's important. Sure. Um, Because that was still, again, uh, like... Over a a year. Over a year after the the PS4 came out. Um, uh, Guilty Gear Exerd Sign (laughs) came out, um, which is really awesome for a number of reasons. Uh, One, because... It's fun to say. Yeah. (laughs) Exerd Sign. Exerd. It's... it's, uh, you know, a, a gorgeous 2D fighting game, which yeah. we do not get many of uh, yeah. these days. And also, like, it's new Guilty Gear, and we hadn't had that for a long time because um, what's it called? I- Ignition... Oh, shit, I didn't write it down. Um, the Guilty Gear developer, which is, I think it's Ignition Factor. That sounds right. Um, uh, oh, could... no, I'm sorry, not Ignition Factor. Arc System Works. Arc System Works is definitely is it, the... It's definitely... It's not Axis? Axis? S-Y-S? A-K-S-Y-S? No. I mean, they might I, be... I the, hate those guys they might be, yeah. all the time. Oh, yeah. Well, they're a pub, They're just a publisher. No, it's Arc System oh, they Works. Um, <laughs> they had, now I won't get them confused. They had lost the rights to Guilty Gear, um, which was kind of their... That's the game that, that pushed them into the into the prime time, and they had lost the rights to it, yeah. uh, which is where Blaze Blue came from, because it was basically them saying, like, well, we can't make Guilty Gear. I guess we'll make... Guilty Gear. Got it. Um, so, but this is them going back to for whatever reason that that stuff all got sorted out. So they were able to make another Guilty Gear. It was very well received. PS3, PS4 exclusive, uh, 2D fighting game. So hey, awesome. awesome. Yeah, good stuff. Should we stick with the uh, already come out games? Yeah, might as well. All right. Uh, in that case. So Axis, <laughs> um, they released uh, Tokyo Twilight Ghost Hunters. Yep. Uh, I don't know who made it <laughs> because <laughs> I am not good at this. But that's uh, it's it's sort of the sort of like a visual novel style puzzle game. Yeah. Um, and the it, it's 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 got a good story from what I've played so far. I've only, I'm only a few hours in. I played through the first couple missions, uh, and and I really like it. I like the characters and I, and. It's it's a little bit campy, but I think that's good sometimes. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, but it came out on Vita too, uh, and and it's it's it plays like a game that should be played on Vita. <laughs> Keep hearing noises. <laughs> um, maybe you know Worcester Twilight Ghost Hunter. Yeah, yeah. That would I bet that would definitely up the ratings if we got murdered on camera during the show. Yeah, the downside is who's going to upload it to YouTube. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Right, that's asking a lot of somebody who kills us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it's so the least they could do. So did you get? You didn't get a chance to play uh, Tokyo Twilight Ghost. I, I right? haven't played it, but um, it, it's it is interesting because I feel like this console generation or this this particular period that we're talking about, yeah. we're seeing a lot of visual novels come out, which historically is not something that's ever really come out in the in the US. I mean they 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 picked up a little steam on the DS and the PSP yep. with um uh the the Phoenix Wright games and 999 but still pretty minimal right. uh until now where I feel like it's kind of coming into its own thing. We're starting to see a lot more of them. Um which is great. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a it's a cool genre and and the, the nice thing about it still being um, a little bit of an uncertain bet is that the publishers then kind of stick to the the good stuff. Like right. we're not we're not quite getting the the detritus yet. Yeah, which so this is it's a little confusing that these are the games we're getting, right? Because I mean, I think the 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 hardest part about bringing any game from Japan is always the translation. Yeah, and these are super story heavy. It's all text. It's all uh, it's all voice acting, and it's. Uh, you kind of wonder why this has found a niche, you know, working its way here to the West. The the only thing I can think of is that they can probably get them cheap. Yeah. 
um, because uh, that's a good you point. know I, because they, they they don't have um, I, I would imagine. I, I don't know who developed Tokyo Twilight Ghost Hunters either, but um, I would bet it's not like a very well known top tier. Uh, <laughs> you, you're trying to look over there. Yeah, I can't see it from here. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's not. I would imagine it's not like a you know top tier right. uh, developer. So they're probably just happy to get some cash for the rights from anybody. You know. True. Uh, so I and I would imagine with a lot of these games, it's it's pretty it's pretty cheap. Yeah, yeah. Um, now another one. Now it's not. What's the date today? Oh, one it's came out today. Yeah, I, is this one that I wrote down? Yes, Must yes, be. it is. It's yeah, it's number, probably it's the same. The You're top probably going to seller go. in Vita games at the moment on Amazon. Oh really? Yes. And as long as we're talking about the same. Uh, game. Yeah, if it lost dimension. Yep, lost yep. dimension. Um, yeah, that's one that I'm pretty excited about too. Um, because it's got a really unique premise to it. Um, it's an RPG with some visual novel elements, um, but it's also... It, it said a... Somewhere I read murder mystery, but I'm not sure anybody's actually being killed or if it's just you're trying to investigate. You have to investigate some activities. Because uh, the, the basic premise is within your party there is a traitor or traitors that you have to ferret out by the end of the game, yeah. um, otherwise they fuck shit up. Um, yes. And that's a, and, and the neatest part is it's randomized right. for every playthrough. Um, Which is great, because um, you're able to level your different characters up, and if you happen to be leveling up a, a traitor, then... <laughs> That's obviously detrimental to your party. Because nothing is better than an RPG where you get to the end of the game and you realize you've totally messed everything up and you have to start all 50 hours over again. I'm assuming it can't be that bad. No. But no. Uh, unlike a lot of the other games I found on, uh, when I was looking for these games, Last Dimension, although having a very um, visual novel feel, there's a whole lot of like third person action RPG style yeah. adventure. Oh yeah. Uh, which sometimes even when playing like Danganronpa, sometimes you're like, let, let me just go run off and do stuff. But, you know, sometimes yeah. it's just like, okay, I'm blasting through the story. Yeah. And it's it's just it bogs you down a little bit. Yeah. Um, so it's always good to to be able to have full control of your character at certain points. And this one feels like it strikes the right balance. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think, I mean, y you need to have some degree of uh, agency in these games, or why aren't they just a comic book, you know? Like, or sure. why aren't they just an anime? I mean, th right. there's... Um, there. I feel like there need to be certain concessions to the medium where you're just wasting everybody's time, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but, I, yeah, I, I think it's a pretty cool idea because it also... Uh, deals with one of the biggest problems that a lot of these types of games have, which is replayability. Yes. Where if, you know, how many times can you read a murder mystery novel? Like, when you already know who the murderer is. Well, that's true. That's true. But it's like watching The Sixth Sense again, you know? It's like, it's like you pick up on different things, pick up on different clues you wouldn't have picked up on not knowing the answer. Yeah, I mean, that's if it's good. Right, that's true. <laughs> Um, I mean, I I can't even get through a single playthrough of a lot of these games. Yeah, so I know. I'm like, think I'm thinking the uh, the whole playability. Yeah, is really a concern of mine. Yeah, you can't you can't get through zero escape. So I'm st I'm, yeah. I I think that's probably still in the cellophane. Why would I take that out until I play nine nine nine? Right. Um, all right. So yeah. Don't don't definitely don't. I'm not. Um, there was something else that was coming out today. No. I, don't, I don't know. I'm sure we'll I, run into it. Yeah, I usually list. check the list for stuff at work, and I didn't notice anything, so... Yeah. Now, there are games that take place, and I'm going to totally screw this up, because I don't uh, prepare for the podcast, but you're familiar with the x Blaze games. Yeah. Yeah. Now, usually a fighting game, right? Uh, well, they... Now, this is where I'm a little n uncertain, but the original x Blaze was a visual novel taking place in the Blaze Blue universe. Oh, okay. That's what I understood. I don't know if it's all the same characters or if it's kind of... It's a different cast that 
tangentially overlaps some of the, the, the Blaze Blue stuff. But that, that was my understanding. Although, when I was looking at some of... I'm presuming you're going to talk about the upcoming... The, sec- ex- the second yes. in the X-Blaze uh, digital novel series. Yeah, when yes. I looked around at that, I did not see really any references to Blaze Blue or anything like that. So I don't know if they're kind of splintering off into their own thing now or what. No, I, I mean, I'm sure it's, uh, I'm, I would guess that's probably the case. Um, the first one had some major issues. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you're a little more familiar with these issues than I am. Yeah, yeah. I, I had been excited about the first one because I just, hey, visual novel. You don't get those too often. Uh, and then I read reviews, and I, I always have kind of my own when I read reviews, which I don't do super often because I feel like I just kind of know enough at this point to be able to parse where things yeah. are, but I, I when I read reviews, I kind of have like this, this fil- the, the Mike Zeller filter that I put certain statements through, because I know there's certain things that always get dinged in reviews that just don't bother me. Um, what, what's one of those things? <clears throat> um, a certain kinds of repetitive gameplay, mm-hmm. and it's got to be certain kinds. Like, if, it, if they talk about a uh, an RPG needing a lot of grinding or something, it just doesn't it doesn't really phase me. Um, if a game is short, that doesn't necessarily bother me. It's actually a plus in my yeah, category. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Um, but the stuff that they talked about with x was pretty crippling. Uh, I, I remember hearing primary among them being that certain conversation options... I'm sorry, not conversation options going into the menus and looking at certain things. Like, you, your your character accumulates this, like, dossier that he sure. needs to go back to to, um, you know, just find out about certain things. Yeah. Uh, accessing certain parts of the dossier would kill you down the line. Basically the equivalent of the old school adventure game, like, oh, you left this item behind, yeah, and yeah. now you're, like, ten areas ahead and you can't go back, so game over. But instead of instead of it being an item, it was like just reading text would would kill your character, and there would be no indication of that. So was it was like a, a bug in the game? Oh no no no! It was, was like it story. Yeah, it was story. Like if you did that, a, you know, certain people would show up later and like murder you, and if you didn't do it, they wouldn't. Wow, so you, like basically you can only play through this game with a walkthrough if it's going to be any fun at all. Yeah, or you have to just keep going back and replay. Because I think they did the, you know, they, like no they, I think they all. did like the 999 thing where you get killed and then you go back and it's like, oh, don't do this again. <sighs> seems um, so re- it seems so irrelevant. Yeah, at least in 999 it made sense yeah. s- thematically and they also like built in things to... to Expedite your your play like you had to. That was the whole point of this. Where this, yeah. where Blaze uh, X Blaze, it sounds more like they're just being dicks. Well, um, hopefully they've learned from the criticism of the first game. Uh, uh, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that that one was not on my list for those reasons. Well, it's coming up. It's yeah. uh, August eleventh, yeah. so we'll see what happens with that. That is by that is being that is Arc System Works. Yeah, because uh, of course they make. Because they make visual, they make extremely technical two D fighters and really and really shitty visual novels. <laughs> I, mm, I get the feeling they should maybe stick to one of those. Now, uh, one that really stands out here in my book uh, is called uh, Dengenki Banco, and it's a. <laughs> All right. The reason it stands out is because actually uh, it's it's a fighting game. Uh, I haven't even heard of this. Yeah, Dengenki Banko. I I hope I've got that right. And it's... uh, Oh! 2015, this year, third quarter. I have heard of this, yep. uh, By Sega. Yep. And it's like kind of like a 2D anime fighting mashup. Yeah. Uh, And we don't really have a ton of those on this list. Yeah, I I got excited when I first heard about that because they mentioned, like, oh, it's featuring so-and-so and and -and so-and-so from these Sega games... And I just, for some reason, I assumed it was like a Sega mash, you know, the equivalent of like a Marvel yeah. versus Capcom, but with Sega. Um, it's not. It's. I didn't it's, know it had any Sega characters. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I thought it was yeah. just anime characters. Yeah, it it is. It's it's some. So, uh, so what is it then? What, it's what is it? from this Dengenki Banko series of visual novels, and it's a fighting game. 
which this this is the stuff. So for any of our viewers, the both of them, hey, John has John has already long since turned this off. <laughs> Yeah, it's the only two views we're going to get on this are John and Joby, because yeah. they're the only two people not in the room today. Yeah. Um, it, hey, guys. Um, th- these are kind of the, like, the, 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 the awful of the Japanese development scene. Like, when, yeah. when you want to do, like, cheapos, you, you do tactical RPGs, shitty tactical RPGs, I should say, because I, I like tactical RPGs a lot, good and ones. I think I think good ones are extremely difficult to develop. Yeah. Um, but you do tactical RPGs, um, visual novels, and very, very low budget 2D fighting games, and you have a lot of, like, uh, a- anime implied nudity in them like you don't actually show anything because most of these are you putting down criminal girls <laughs> was there any actual nudity in criminal no oh not criminal girls i'm thinking um akiba strip that's what i i thought you know. yeah that's uh no actual nudity but then that game was so much fun <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm sure there's no nudity in criminal girls because it's it's um uh, it's Danganronpa, and they they don't do that. That's um, Spike, Chun, Spike Chunsoft as well. Yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ, these guys um, make a lot of games. Not really. They've just made a lot of good ones that we've been talking about a lot lately. Okay. But um, yeah. So th- there's this this stuff is kind of the the detritus. It's it's sort of the um, the U.S. equivalent of like a shitty first-person shooter. Like this is what comes out from these low-budget development houses at the end when they're trying to apply to a very specific demographic. Have you ever played Famicom Detective Clubs? Detectives Club? No, I'm, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. But yeah, I, I uh, when I was going when I was getting all my reproduction games, uh, I picked up Famicom Detectives Club Two on the SNES or from the Super Famicom, and Wow, like that game sucks you in from the very beginning. Really? Yeah, like it is. It is. It is the next visual novel I want to play. Um, like I, I, I think I'm going to play that before I get into the nine nine nine. Really? I wouldn't have thought those had aged very well. Yeah, it's it's great because it's awesome two D hand drawn everything. It's it's great. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm learning something. And, well, I mean, I, I hope the translation. Uh, maintains its its, uh, its quality throughout, <laughs> throughout the game because the first half hour twenty you know half half hour hour that I played was uh, was really good. I was playing an Atlas game a couple of years ago, yeah, and uh, it was one of the Megami Tensei games, the Shin Megami Tensei like game, Nocturne or Digital Devil um, Saga or something. It was like Devil that. Survivor. It was the tactical RPG one. Was that on? And- is that a handheld one? Yeah, yeah, I think that was a DS. Yeah. And um, carry on. <laughs> m- mid conversation in one section, there was just like a, a text bubble, just totally in Japanese. They just didn't, <laughs> didn't translate it. That one. Yeah, and it was or, just like, or maybe the character actually said something in a different language. No, because then the conversation just like proceeded along, and it was just <laughs> like, what, what the hell was that? That's awesome. Yeah, um, you know, it, I think it hasn't been that long since. We got really shitty translations all the time, and I think we've forgotten about how uh, how bad it used to be. Oh yeah, PlayStation One and even most of the PlayStation Two era. I think I think translations were kind of garbage. Yeah, yeah. I, I I mean, that's a that's another thing that that when I hear people bitch about in reviews, I'm kind of like, mm. you know, if it's anything coming from like, especially if it's something coming from like Atlas or Capcom or something yeah. like. You guys don't really know like what a bad translation <laughs> is, or like what a bad you know voice acting sounds like. Like, yeah, maybe maybe we're not hitting it out of the park. This is not uh, you know this is not Citizen Kane here, but like, right. I don't feel embarrassed. Like, if somebody walked in while I was playing one of these games, I would not immediately feel the urge to explain, like, to apologize right. for what I was doing. Right. Absolutely. Um. So I, I'm actually going to jump in since Please. we were just talking about implied nudity. Um, so I, I'm going to be really brief with this one because I didn't even write down the date that this came out. But this is a, a little while ago, a couple yeah. months ago. Um, a game called uh, Tears to Tiara 2, uh, Heir, to the, Heir of the Overlord. And I saw it. It came out around the same time as that um, R. Tonelako, 
Tonelico or Tonelico spinoff and a couple other RPGs that looked sort of okay. Yeah. And I was like, oh, maybe I'll maybe I'll pick this one up. It looks kind of decent, tactical RPG. Um, and I, I read some stuff about it, and it, it started to sound kind of shitty. Um, but the one interesting thing, and this is a while ago that I read this, and I couldn't find it when I went back. Um, I'm pretty sure it's a sequel to a porno game. Oh. Um, I believe the original... I, I, I can't remember where I read this, but Tears to Tiara, the original, was a PC porno game. Um, yeah. How dare they not port that over I know. I, well, see, that's the other thing. Why am I going to buy the sequel if I haven't played the original? <laughs> I know. I, I won't be able to... I won't be able to follow the story. Right. Why is he fisting that girl? I don't know. Why wouldn't he be? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I was really worried this was going to be kind of a dud of a show, but we, we were able to talk about fisting, so... Yeah, it's... you didn't shoehorn that in at all. <laughs> um, so, I, I'm, I'm a little confused. And, and, I mean, in so many ways. <laughs> but, like, the... Art well, t- when, when I... When a man loves a woman very much, or when Wait, a man loves a man... Stop making that motion with your hand. Um, <laughs> the, the man loves himself. <laughs> uh, the R. Tornelico series, the Atelier... Iris. Iris series, this Tears to Tierra. Whenever I see these games, they all kind of look the same. Like They have like this third-person, sort of like soft, like almost like watercolor, pastel yeah, background. Yeah. Uh, are these all the same developer that are just like shitting out a bunch of games at I the end of a life? So, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think, oh, this is not. I believe this is Gust, who I think are actually Korean. Okay. I, I don't think they're actually a Japanese developer, but yeah, and and they're. I played one of the the um, Atelier Iris games, and it was okay. I yeah. Mean, it was kind of a mid tier RPG, I would say. Um, and do those games have like? And of course, I'm getting so many different ones confused. Like, uh, you know, I feel like I can just throw Hyper Dimension Neptunia into the mix with. Uh, mm, with even yeah, the... I mean that's a slightly different breed. Right. Well, I, I feel like I've I've seen a lot of people complain about the Atelier series about being like all about um, like they're like, people said these are games for pedophiles. Uh, well, our, I mean, Hyper Dimension Neptunia definitely is. Yes. Definitely for pedophiles. I enjoy that game thoroughly. <laughs> no, I, I can't get through the first two hours. Oh, of God. Game. Like, oh, God. Yeah, my I, brain starts hurting. I played that game, and I was like, okay, you know, I heard... I, I'm familiar with your anime nonsense. So yeah. I'll just power through. Um, within probably ten minutes, there was a scene of two, I don't know, 12-year-old girls... Yeah. Uh, naked but obscured with yeah. stuff like grappling on each other, and I was like, "Whoa, Nelly, yeah. what the fuck? Like, yeah. this is not my scene. What what happened?" And to be fair, like certain people, I no, no I, like I can I can I can, I can almost get behind. Being like, this is a really perverted game. Wink, wink. This has a lot of like, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, like a lot of like implied, you know, sex and nudity and blah blah blah. Uh, and that's fine. Like, I don't mind that. Like, uh, even if it's like, you know, bordering on pedophilic. No, I, I, like, I'm, I'm just trying to say this from like a from, from a from a gaming standpoint. <laughs> oh no, it's the cops! Look right, out! Seriously. Um, I'm, but what I'm trying to say, I'm not trying to defend the games. I'm trying to I'm, I'm I'm putting them on trial a little bit by saying I would be okay with the subject matter if the games were fun to play, if they weren't like just these boring slogs as you call them I like it's just it's painful to play through these games yeah and I yeah, you know to, to get down off of my, my high horse I really enjoyed most of the Leisure Suit Larry games and they're pretty dirty too but yeah. they're fun they're, like they're, they're funny fun game, and they're yeah and they're funny right um yeah you're Despite all of the nudity, I I don't think you're supposed to really be like jerking it to Leisure Suit Larry. No, <laughs> no I don't think um, that was Al Lowe's intention. No, um, no. Um, but when was the last time Al Lowe was involved in a Leisure Suit yeah, Larry game? Yeah, it's been a while. Um, I, I so actually, I, I tell your Iris, mm-hmm. I do not think is supposed to be the the one that I played was not a. Dirty game. It, okay. was, it was. It was a pretty. And again, I, I'm lumping normal, all these yeah. together because they all kind of blend in my brain. Um, R. Tonelico, or however the hell you pronounce that. Yeah. Um, 
that has a little bit more of a reputation, which uh, my understanding with that game is that um, all of the party members except for the main character are females, and to power them up, you have to, like, unlock their memories, you, like, climb inside their mind, and there, there's a lot of... You're, getting inside of them. There, there's there's a lot of, like, wordplay. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm putting an asterisk next to Art and Elegant. Um, yeah, th- those games are a little By more... By next week, I'll have tried all of them. Yeah, <laughs> you played the first five minutes, and so this is great, and right. then never they, touched it again. Amazon, the box from Amazon gets delivered to my door by the police. <laughs> We're here to deliver your package. Do you mind if we come in? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. Um... Okay, well, let's move on, man. We, we've, we've spent enough time uh, talking well, about I, stuff. Well, I, I, I did just want to say that I, 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 the, my one addition to this is um, it, it does amuse me the way the, the standards kind of get a little fast and loose at the end of a system's <laughs> lifespan. Yeah, that's like, true. And it, it kind of reminds me of, um, like, the Sega Saturn. And, and despite Sega's slightly looser standards in certain regards, you know, they've always been kind of like the edgy one compared sure. to Nintendo, you know, back when they had consoles, compared to Nintendo. I mean, they, they still, in the grand scheme of things, what you can get away with in a video game is much less than what you can get away with in, like, a film or anything. Mm-hmm. There are definitely some porno games on the Saturn, though, because, like... When when the Saturn kind of shit the bed, there there was this feeling of just like ah whatever, um, <laughs> like and so there's definitely I don't none were I don't think any were ever released in the U S but there's definitely some porno games and on the Japanese Saturn I kind of like how like the PS3 now they're like uh, Tears to Tierra wasn't wasn't that a porno nah, whatever whatever just just don't show any dicks uh, <laughs> that's really that's really it too. It's like you can show it to everyone as long as you don't show any dicks. Yeah, pretty much. Um, pretty much. I mean, there, there's a whole thing to get into with that. As much as we have like weird cultural hang-ups and we're always like, oh, the rest of the world, like they they get it. There's plenty of other like weird things in other countries about what you can and can't show as regard to like sure. nudity and sexual content. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to skip what I was just going to say about Asian porn. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, good but, for once. It's funny because um, I'm always off and on collecting for the 3DO, and in <laughs> Japan there's a ton of like porno games. Really? Oh yeah. I didn't know that. That's yeah. really they're like expensive too, which is I, I and they're just anything. like anime visual porno novels. They're not or? anime. Oh really? They're yeah. like actual porno games. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I don't know how graphic they get, but. Um, but yeah, this is they're like one of the first CD-based systems, so they're like, look what we can do with video. Uh, so um, <laughs> yeah, if anybody wants to send us a couple of those, yeah, um, definitely. I'm, we'll, I'm not going to pay the prices that eBay is demanding for them. Yeah, we'll we'll it's review crazy. them. We'll do a um, do a, we'll a backlog. backlog. <laughs> it's just like all that's that that all mosaic episode that we were talking we'll, about. We'll call it X log. Yeah, X log. Triple X log. Yeah, uh, we're we're not going to do that. Because I don't think I could play that with someone else in the room. <laughs> uh, okay, do you have another one? Or you want me to go next? You can, you can go next. All I, right. I don't have a ton more actually. So. so this is one that I will probably buy and then never play. Okay. Because it's a game. Yes, <laughs> because that's that's your what style. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Have you? S- no. mm. Yeah. But we're gonna pretend this is the entire collection. Yeah, and that there's not an even Shh. more. <laughs> Sorry. Um so the <laughs> yeah it gets bad behind the camera. Well they've all, they've they've seen it. We we used to film elsewhere in the apartment. That's right. That's right. Uh backlog even the background. Yeah, it's it's a mess. Yeah. I'm a mess. This one is a well-known title, I believe. Um it's The Legend of Heroes. Um Trial Trails oh, okay. of Cold Steel. Yep. For some reason I don't I didn't put a release date on this one. Uh I believe it's coming this year. Uh and it's coming for Vita and PS3, uh, published by Xseed. Okay. Or is that Crossseed? I'm gonna say Xseed. Like Xseed, you oh. know, Xseed expectations. Yeah. Which they don't. <laughs> no, no Xseed's pretty good. I'd, I'd say they meet expectations. Exceeding. <laughs> um, wait, have you played any Legend of Heroes games? Yes. Yes, yes I have. Um, and so I played. Oh, is it? Here's one I can't get rid of. <laughs> Is that the one that I... Is that the first one? This is the Japanese version of the first one. How did you... 
wind up with like you can get the others for like a dot. Yeah, that's the one that I played. Yep. Um, D- that I don't that, know how I got. It. <clears throat> so I fell asleep playing that game at work. What? <laughs> what were you playing it on? A PSP. Okay. Um, so uh, now. There's there's three on the PSP. Yes, there's three, and they're they're like sequential too. Like actually, there's all... four on the PSP. Uh, there's well, there's tra- yeah, Trails in the Sky, which is a yes. different, and that that se- that's a whole different series, and I feel like that needs to be off on its own because that is a very well received game. All of those are considered very quality games. Okay. Um, and I think they're all out on Steam now, or two of them are on Steam or something. Um. That Legend of Heroes trilogy, though, is garbage. Do you, I mean, do you think it's really garbage, or do you think it's just so unoriginal and by the by the numbers JRPG? Like, it just there's nothing special about it. It's like here's a game that we brought over to America because there is no other, there are no other JRPGs on the system currently. Um, I mean, yeah, those were early releases because I think you could not have gotten away with that later on because right. there was so much good stuff on the PSP. Yeah. Um, no, it was it was bad. I there I bought a lot of those early. I, I was actually a pretty early adopter with the PSP because they got two great Mega Man games pretty yes. much right off the jump. Powered up and yeah, and uh, Maverick, Maverick Hunter, Hunter X. X. Yeah. Um, which were both excellent. Um. <laughs> just checking. Just making sure. Always doing um, a mental list. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so I, I was kind of, I was, uh, I, I had a dearth of games to to play after those two on the PSP, um, and so there was a lot of like bargain bin scrounging. There were a lot of like, um, I think. PC ports actually on the PSP right away, mm-hmm. and most of them were really shitty, like yeah. really shitty, uh, because they they were these bland. And again, these are the types of games that we would not have seen in the US like right. a decade ago because they just wouldn't have gotten translated because developers had more sense than that. Where we were also hungry for JRPGs after the PlayStation and PlayStation Two era. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they're, they're pretty bland games already, and and when I say bland, it's like they tend to be these like quasi strategy battle systems, which just ended up making everything go longer because you had to walk over the enemy to the enemy before you could wallop him twice yeah. and kill him. Um, and they tended to have like really weird difficulty spikes in them. Um, I and I ended up getting rid of I. I I got rid of most of them eventually because I just couldn't stand them anymore. Um, but like there, there'd be this weird battle, and the way it would play out, like you'd be you'd suddenly go from dealing like a hundred damage to an enemy to like five, and you'd think, oh, this is one of those like battles that I can't win. Like yeah. that's you know that's that's typically a way that a game telegraphs that like you're supposed to lose this battle for the story is suddenly the enemy is like way too hard. Right. Um, so that's so you don't use all your elixirs and everything that you've been saving. Um, so I'd be like, oh, okay, and I just you know get killed and then nope. get a game over. <laughs> and it's like, oh, I was supposed to win that. That's yeah. I need to go grind for four and a half hours. Um, and they didn't get better as time went on because there were three of them that were kind of shit out. I mean, I did not play all of them. I, I got pretty far in the first one and just couldn't stomach it anymore. Because the other thing. One of the big problems with the PSP, and one of the things that they thank God fixed with the Vita, the PSP was disc based, yeah. which meant you had loading times, yep. like crazy loading times yeah. on a handheld. I mean, outside of, I mean, I don't. Okay, I mean, this it's been a while yeah. since I've actually sat down and played PSP uh, on a PSP. I don't remember the load times being excruciating or anything. They're excruciating when you're playing an RPG and you're getting into lengthy random encounters oh, every couple it's seconds. Every yeah, battle. and it's got to load every okay. battle. That Occasionally, blows. every move. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it was good. bad. Um, yeah, no, they, they were dead. Like you know, God of War and stuff had moved pretty smoothly. Yeah. Um, and I, and I think Grand Theft Auto games, like they just like the console versions, they had that really long initial load time. Yeah, and then there was none once you get in the game. Yeah, sure. no, I mean, it wasn't like the system was brutal overall, but yeah. definitely, like, when you got a handheld, like, you're 
your intention is to play for a couple minutes and then you're done and right. you know you got to go do something else. Um, so th- these games were were not great, and that's why I. So you are separating. Um, what was the yeah, what was trails the in the sky? Trails in the sky. Tits. A few. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, Oopsie so, daisy. So do you, is this is this new one a continuation of this new trilogy, or you I, have, no, I yeah. honestly don't know. I'm it assuming kinda, that's probably the case. Yeah. It, it it I would not surprise me if I remember correctly. Um, I'm. The, the original trilogy of Legend of Heroes were old PC games. Yeah. And they had all been out for a long time yeah. once the PSP came out. Um, so I'm assuming that that was just, that was just a, a cash grab. Yeah. It, it, those, oh, they were so bad. Like, I, I've definitely fallen asleep playing good games before, you know? It especially vi- Especially visual novels. I will occasionally nod off playing a visual novel. Or a cutscene um, during, like, Metal Gear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Metal Gear Solid 4. Yeah. You nod off and you wake can- up half an hour later and it's still going. <laughs> My controller has turned off. <laughs> I'm asleep. <laughs> um... But this one, I actually, I was playing it at, at work during a, a designated break period. Well, I, I forgot was, we were in the middle of a story. Yeah, I was, playing it, I was playing it at work, and just, I was so bored, I just nodded off right there at my desk in front of my boss. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. That's when I decided I am done with these games and this series. Goodbye. Not playing games at work, just oh, no, these no, games no. specifically. No. So, I was surprised to see... A game coming out based on Steins Gate, the anime. Oh yeah, yeah. Now, I've everyone told me that. Like when I tell people what my favorite animes are, you know, like Death Note, and yeah. um, you know, I've watched the beginning of Attack on Titan, really like that. Uh, you know, Evangelion. I'm, I'm naming like the big triple yeah. A, but they're the ones I really like. Uh, and I've seen some other ones that I like too, but. Uh, everyone always points me towards Steins Gate and says, "This you should be into this. It's, it's very, it's very uh, cerebral." It's targeted at teenage girls. Is it? I, I don't know. I just that tends to be the type of thing. I've watched the first couple episodes, and it is like super intentionally confusing. Okay. And it's it's yeah, I can't. I don't know who it's directed toward because it's. I feel like I should be loving it, but I'm not yet. Mm. So, I think the fact that this game is coming out is going to push me to just just marathon the series right. and, uh, and and see if I like it before the game comes out and and then take take that purchase separately. Steins Gate's coming out by I believe P-Cube P-Q-U-E-B-E mm. uh, I don't know if that's the that. developer or the publisher uh, and I don't even know the style of gameplay. It looks like a visual novel. I can't okay. tell. It's yeah. just pictures that look I mean, like from the what, anime. Pretty much every anime has a video game adaption of it, which might be surprising to some U.S. viewers right. because they're, I'm sure there, there's plenty of people um, that, you know, there's plenty of animes that you think that had a game. It, if it's out, probably. Right. And it was probably a shitty visual novel. Again, that's that's <laughs> right. one of the kind of the, the detritus of, of uh, Japanese. When I used to go, when I was in Japan and I would go to stores, what you would find in like their, you know, bargain bin, mm-hmm. um, you know, for us it's always like old copies of Madden right. and like, you know, the, the children's show games. Um, for them, it's, it's uh, pachinko games, horse racing games, and uh, anim- in games based on animes. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, I feel like I've been dominating this. Do you want? Yeah. Do you want to take over for um, a second? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll throw out another one. Um, w- one thing that I I probably will not buy, but I was kind of excited about. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was cool. Um, the Disgaea Triple Play and is coming out. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and you're done. So no. I saw it over there, so I was like, I can do it for Brian. Yep. Um, the Disgaea Triple Play, um, which is coming out in September, mid-September. PS3 um, exclusive. PS3 exclusive. And it's all three of the PS3 uh, Disgaea games on one disc, which goes to show you that, that maybe they weren't really maxing out the system's capacity with uh, with those other ones if they can fit all three of them on, on one. However, um, these games take forever to beat. They do, yeah, they're huge. It, it does make me wonder, like, 
I, I guess they're just recycling a lot of content. I mean, I, I I've played them, so I, it's not like that should be a surprise. But but for thirty nine ninety nine. You never have to buy another video game for the rest of your life. Yeah, I mean, if if you can stomach it, those, those are not for me. Yeah, th- those games, they're pretty grindy, and I can handle some some grinding. But even even for me, it's it's a little. I feel like I I feel like I need to take a poll, ask everyone what their favorite Disgaea game is, and play through that one. Probably the first one, like the on PS two. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, and, and that be it. To be like, that was my first foray and the last foray into the Disguise series. Because I want to experience it. I like the characters. I like the character designs. And even the gameplay is not bad. It's just, I can't imagine finishing one of those games and going, I can't wait for the next, <laughs> next one. Next, you just like pop it out of the system, slam the next one in. Right, which, you know, when you buy like a the triple play, as they're calling it, it's like, who is that for? Yeah, I, when the first one came out, I remember... It, it is kind of funny, because you think, like... I'll probably buy it, by the way. Because you think, like, well... The types of people that play these games are probably buying them right when they come out. Right. Like, who are you targeting with this collection? Yeah. Probably, um, you know what it's going to be? It's going to be people who wander into GameStop, don't know what they're there for, and then they're like, oh, look at this, this <laughs> looks cute. There's three on games that. in one, and it's, you know, like $13 a game, basically. It's like it's it's an awesome value. Yeah. For oh sure. yeah. Yeah. But for who? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like, I I I can't imagine somebody not being familiar with the series and also being drawn in by whatever box art they have. Right. Like, you know, it's like, oh, this looks like a lot of half naked children. Yeah. Give me give me some of that action. Yeah, and and obviously it's not like it's for PS3, not PS4, so you're not getting like the new market or right, anything like right. that. Right, It's a little confusing, but yeah. by all means, if you can make money di- by doing it, yeah. Do it I, I, I think when the first one came out, they billed it as 200 hours worth of gameplay yeah. on, on one, on, in one game, so it, it does not take that long to finish the story mode. It's substantially less so, but um, yeah, but there's a lot of uh, secret content and stuff. All right, so do you have more on your list? I have one more on oh, my list. Let's so. do that first. Okay. Um, so the last one is a, another game that came out pretty recently, though. Um, I'm, I'm kind of surprised you didn't want to talk about this one. Uh, nope, I didn't Jay- want to talk about it. Okay. Nope. J Star's Victory versus Plus. Oh yeah. Um, it's a pretty cool game. I'm kind of surprised this was able to get released here because... All the copyright laws, right? Yeah, yeah, because, well... <laughs> I mean, the thing is, uh, Bandai has basically consumed all of the remaining anime rights in the U.S., so I'm sure that's why they were able to pull it off. Okay. Um, I think they own Shonen Jump now, so... Well, that helps. Yeah. yeah. I think Viz and Bandai are some way connected. Um, now, this game is not what I thought it was. When for for the longest time, I thought this game was um, like a two D Smash Brothers style mashup of anime characters. Uh, and this is more of like an arena, yeah, three like D arena, yeah, one on one. I think it's two on two actually. Two on two. Yeah. Okay. See, it's still evolving in my brain. Um, which I mean, Smash Brothers is not that different from an arena fighter. It's just a side-scrolling arena fighter as yeah. opposed to a top-down. Exactly. Um, yeah, so it's kind of the same thing. It, um, I think this is supposed to be the this, this spiritual successor to the Jump All-Stars games. Right. I mean, it's right... J-Stars. It's right there in the name. Um, which were fantastic games. They're one of the few Smash Brothers knockoffs that I actually think get pretty close to the quality of a Smash Brothers. Nice. Um, and since Shonen Jump is kind of the the home of every major anime, with a handful of exceptions, it's pretty much one game with everybody in it. Um, definitely a shout out to uh, Paul Linga, friend of the show, who uh, is probably playing this game right now. <laughs> uh, he has sent me like invitations to play because with PlayStation Four, you can now. Um, with with some titles, only one person needs to own the game. Oh, really? You can play online with other people. That's something they haven't done since like Game Boy Advance. Okay, I think it's called Share Play. Huh. Uh, so that's really cool. I'm surprised I haven't heard of that. Yeah, it's uh, it's something that I think they promised when PS4 was first announced. You know, you can kind of jump into someone's mm-hmm. game without owning it. 
um, with a limited, to a limited capacity. Yeah. Uh, I mean, but it's smart because men, if that doesn't get you to buy the game, yeah. I don't know what's going. Yeah, on. seriously. Uh, uh, so yeah. now, next up, I have a list of games that aren't so special. <laughs> Nothing about the titles themselves, uh, but it's more. These are multi-platform games. But these are st- it's still kind of surprising that yeah. all these games are coming to PS3, uh, along with probably 360, along with probably current gen PS4 and Xbox One. Uh, there's the Swindle, yeah, I, two, yeah, some kind of 2D sort of stealthy sort of uh, platformer of some sort. Um, I've looked into it a little bit. It looks interesting. Okay. Uh, I think it's also coming to the Vita, which is nice, but it's on everything. Uh, Goat Simulator. <laughs> coming to everything. Uh, the episodic King's Quest. Uh, the new episode of Life is Strange is coming out for uh, PS3. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Life huh. is Strange is... I thought that was PS... Or I thought that was just next-gen games. No, it's... I think it's 360 and PS3 as well. Oh, cool. Yep. Uh, which, uh, according to Joby, is fantastic. Yeah, I've heard nothing but good things about that. That seems like the type of thing I would get into. Me too. It's sort of like Heavy Rain without all the bad stuff. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. sort of like Heavy Rain without, uh, what's his name? David Cage. David Cage. Uh, yeah, it's, it sounds like something I want to play because it's uh, very emotional. It makes you happy. It makes you sad. Like, I, you know, I, I don't get enough depressing shit in my life. <laughs> yeah, um, me, me neither. And, uh, but that's one of those things that I'm going to wait for... Hopefully, a physical release. Yeah, I, I would imagine once that's done, we'll probably. It's been on high profile enough. Definitely. Uh, One Piece Pirate Warriors three. That's also coming. Is that the um? Is that the one that's uh, like Dynasty Warriors? It's the same. I can only assume. Uh, yeah. It's on its way to having as many sequels as Dynasty Warriors. Yeah. Uh, Mighty Number no. Nine, of course, is coming. Yeah. Uh, Tales of Zestiria, which is okay, yeah. what I thought was going to be just a PlayStation 4 game. is actually a PlayStation 3 game as well. Oh, really? Yep. Interesting. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5. Thank God, finally. Listen. Dear Activision, you're trying to reboot a franchise, right? You're calling it Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 because really you're trying to dismiss American Wasteland, uh... Tony Hawk Underground, you're trying to kind of like push those aside and be like, we're getting back to the basics, we're getting back to what made these games good. Don't do this. Like, <laughs> like you're splitting your development teams up, you're, you're, just don't do it. Make it PS4, Xbox One, start fresh. I know you're going to do it anyway, but it's a bad idea. I promise you. Call of Duty Black Ops 3. I didn't know Call of Duty games were still coming out for last gen consoles. Oh yeah, yep, yep. They like definitely Advanced are. Warfighter or Warfare. Yep, that, that was came, that. Yep, that's. I didn't know that uh, because Advanced Warfare looks beautiful on on current gen stuff. Uh, I have no idea what it looks like on on the old consoles. Probably shitty. Probably. I mean, they always had like a, a really good frame rate, which I feel like that's really important for those games. Uh, but with Advanced Warfare, I was like, it not only moves fast, it looks amazing. Uh, so I'm curious to see. I think to downport a lot of those games, they strip out a lot of the like finer details, and it ends up all looking, of the texture yeah, resolution. Yeah, it ends up looking very bland. Yeah. So to finish off this category of multi-platform games, this is actually a, a PS3 and PS4 game I had never heard of before. I also think, strangely, it's going to make an appearance on like. Uh, iOS and Android. Okay. But other, but as far as consoles go, this is a PS3, PS4 exclusive, and it's called Dragon Fin Soup. Hmm. I have not heard of this one. I had not either. It's by a development team called Grim Brothers. Okay. Gr- Grim Bros. Okay. Yeah, uh, and as far as I can tell, it's a five-person development team. Yeah. Now, it's kind of a top-down action RPG with crafting, and it's coming out sometime this year. Really? The only thing that worries me is that it's also coming to these mobile platforms. <laughs> uh, so I don't know... Yeah, it's probably going to be download only some little indie game, which, yeah. whatever, that's fine. If it's good, then great. Yeah. Right? Um, but watch the trailer. Uh, watch the tra- trailer for Dragon Fin Soup. It looks surprisingly good. And this is the kind of game... Uh, 
that gets overlooked yeah. late in a console's life cycle, which so luckily it's coming for PS3 as well. Yeah. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right, before we move on, coming up I have a list of, uh, of Vita games. Thank God. Oh, because I figured we'd fly through those pretty yeah. quickly. Um, do you have anything else on your list that you need to talk about? No, those those are my those are my everything else mm, that was exclusive was looking a little questionable. Okay, uh, I don't have any information for any of these games. So <laughs> this is going to be very informative. Well, it'll be as informative as usual. Right. It it's sort of the equivalent of us sitting here reading you the newspaper. Yeah. Because <laughs> everybody loves that. Yeah. Now. I've looked up some of these games, and they're all games. I'm, I'm like double checking. They're actually all games I'm interested in to one degree or another. Okay. Mostly because they're Vita games, physical release Vita Thank games. Thank God, yeah. Uh, that I'm just, you know, I'm clamoring for anything on yeah. that system at this point. And if it plays on the PlayStation Vita TV, <laughs> even, even better. better. Right? Especially since half of them are probably visual novels. Yeah. So the first one is called, and you're going to see this a lot on Amazon. Anytime you look at a game, this one pops up as. Uh, something else you're interested in. We also recommend this for you. <laughs> it's called Norn 9 Var Commons. I don't know what it is either. It's coming November 3rd. We'll see it then. It's got a, it's got a fun name, though. Yep. Uh, this one's called Code Realize Guardians of Rebirth. Yeah. yeah. Again, I th- I'm assuming all these are visual novels. Uh, October 20th. Okay. Persona 4... Dancing All Night uh, is coming out <coughs> September 29th. I, this one, at least I we know something about. I what? You don't like rhythm action games? No, I can't. <sighs> you can't what? I can't deal with a Persona are you dancing too, are game. Are you too white to have rhythm? No, I, I like theater rhythm. I enjoyed that okay. a lot. But that's a whole series. It's, it's, it's a tapping game. It's, you know... What is this? It's dancing. It's got it right there in the name, don't you? But on Vita, it's, you're tapping to make people dance. Uh, okay. I don't know. I, I guess there's just something... It's it's a spin-off of one game. You're, you're tapping to make anime teens dance. I, I don't know. It just... I'm hoping after the, the, the prom, where all these anime teens are dancing at, there's just a whole lot of anime sex. Yeah, there's just, just a big teenage orgy. I'm sure. I'm sure Atlas will have no problem. It should with be that. called Persona Four Dancing All Night. Brian, this is everything you've ever wanted. And you'll just you'll just rapture right there. Sweet. Uh, did you play Corpse Party on PSP? I did not. I am familiar with that one, though. I want to play those. Yeah. Uh, if they if it had a physical release in the states, I would have bought it already. But yeah, um, they were pretty pricey for download games. They still too. are. Yeah. I want to say it's uh, I want to say it's twenty bucks a pop for one and two. Uh, and those are playable on the PlayStation TV, so that sounds like something I would, yeah. would have downloaded if, like, maybe twenty bucks for both of them. But no, that's that's a little on the pricey side, yeah. yeah. Uh, but the the third entry in the series is coming uh, to Vita uh, on October thirteenth. It's called Corpse Party Blood Drive. Oh, for some reason I thought it was a remake of the first one. Maybe it is. Hmm. And if it is, then I'm glad I didn't spend yeah, twenty bucks yeah. on the other two. I, I I'm not 100% on that, but I feel like I thought I had heard that. I'm going to look into that. Okay. That's good to know. <laughs> um, you know what? There are... I could import the European versions. If they were... Were the physical releases of the European Corpse Party? I don't know. Because... I usually just ignore European games yeah. because of the PAL compatibility. Yeah. But on a, a handheld, it wouldn't matter, right? On the Vita, it matters. It I, does. I believe the Vita... Well, I know the 3DS is region locked, and I thought I had heard that the Vita, when it heard that, did the same thing. But outside of region locking, like on the PSP, if I if I were to import the first two Corpse Party games... Those are fine, yeah. The they're, they're, uh, PSP is so not... No, yeah, because... Okay. Yeah, outside of regional, I, mean, like, I was just concerned about like home. The, your your home console is like the what's, what's the sixty hertz versus fifty hertz. The, the yeah, no handhelds. That doesn't matter. I've, I've bought I bought uh, European games before for handhelds. Um, yeah, and, and I think it, I just I knew that, but I sort of like tuned out at the <laughs> European market. Uh, so I was like, oh, I don't want to play through these in Japanese. No other yeah, option. Yeah, 
percent. Yeah, no, that's more a problem with uh, with like cartridges and stuff. Yeah, I'll have to look into Blood Drive then. Uh, Sword Art Online, which is a very popular yeah, anime yeah, series, yeah. which is actually pretty good. Is it good? Yeah, uh, it, it's got problems, <laughs> but but I like it. Don't I, we all? I, I like it enough to uh, to have watched it and uh, and watched. I think I'm probably just a few episodes from finishing it, so I got to get back into that. But um, there was. I want to say there's two Vita games. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. This is... <laughs> I, I want to say that they're bringing the... I swear I wrote this down. It's called it's called Sword Art Online Lost Song. And it's coming to PS4. This is what it is. Now I've got it. Okay, there are right, two Vita games. There are two Vita games, and this is a remake, or a, they're just porting over... Uh, Lost Song, which I believe was the second Sword Art Online Vita game. Mm, I'm not yeah, totally sure yeah. about that, but I don't think anybody cares. I don't think I don't <laughs> think either of them reviewed very well. Like they were competent games, but they weren't awesome. Right? Yeah. Uh, so maybe this doesn't belong in this list. Uh, the next one does, though. Danganronpa Ultra Despair Girls, yep. which of course. I don't know if we're excited for it. Yeah, I mean... I'm morbidly it's, curious. It's, I guess it's good that the series is going on, despite how depressing it is. But, yeah, um, yeah I, I just... I don't know. Third-person shooter or third-person brawler. Yeah. Uh, I have... I didn't play video games for almost an entire week. And then today, I... I'm making up for it. I am making up for it. Before you got here and after you leave... Uh, is is all about Danganronpa 2. Nice. I'm still so early on in that game, like, nothing has happened, really. And uh, and Joby has sort of uh, let it slip that it doesn't play as much like the first game as I anticipated, uh, to an extent. I think yeah. he, was, he was trying to dance around not spoiling things. Yeah. And in a sense, I think he might have told <laughs> me that maybe things don't heat up for a while. No, they definitely do. They do. They do. Yeah, shit gets real pretty fast in that game. Okay, well, they're all about to have the party. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I I was gonna say something and I can't say anything because even saying somebody's name could spoil. Yeah. For somebody else. Yeah, it's it's really uh, yeah. Th- there's no way to not spoil those games and not talk about them. But trust us, they're they're good. Really you play good. Them. And the end of the first game makes you like as depressing as it can be. Um, I remember when Mike was finishing the first game, and he was like, "He was like, I, was like, I don't know, this game's put me in a bad place." <laughs> and uh, so I was like, "Well, what are you going to do about the second game?" He goes, "I'm just going to jump right into yeah. it." Yeah. And now, have, yeah. having beaten the first game, I know you why. see why. <laughs> you have to. You have to. Yeah. yeah. You, the story is so good that you need to see what's coming next, and I still haven't seen what's coming next. There's so much to go. All right. So I'm um, yeah. Uh, I have. <laughs> I have the special edition of Danganronpa Ultra Despair Girls ordered from NIS. Uh, because <laughs> and another one from Amazon, just in case it doesn't show up. No, it's only from NIS. Oh, really? Yeah, they don't. NIS has their own system of um, selling pre order uh, special editions. Okay. Which, um, <coughs> which is good. I think it, it sort of limits the number that are available, which makes it a little more special to own. Yeah. And, uh, and at the same time, uh, you get to deal with. Customer service who speak <laughs> the as printies, printies. yeah, which is amazing. I love I, you guys. That's so great. I really do. If you're looking for any extra help, yeah, <laughs> I can be a printy dude, dude. Um, okay, uh, th- not a Vita exclusive, but Zero Escape Three is coming in 2016. Nice. You're excited for that? I, I am very excited for that. That that may be a day one purchase. I've invested myself enough in this series at that point. Now you played 999 on on DS because that's yep. the only place it came out to, came out on, right? Yep. You played Zero Escape on... 3DS. On 3DS. that's all I had at the time. What will you be playing this on? <sighs> Probably 3DS, I guess. Just to you kind know, of just stick. to... Yeah. 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 Um, now, the 3DS version of, of uh, Zero Escape did have a huge, well-known glitch. Um, there were certain times where if you saved at certain places, it would crash and erase your game. Oh, that's a big deal. Um, yeah. It's only during the investigation segments, though, so I just never saved at those points, which was occasionally annoying. But right, you're like, I'm tired. I don't want to play this, but I also don't want to lose my yeah, save. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, it's 
the three DS is capable of patching games, right? Was there yeah. ever a patch for it? I don't think there was ever a patch for it. Interesting. Okay. Uh, and then the last one I have on the list is uh, is Dungeon Travelers Two. Uh, it looks like a dungeon crawler. Yeah, is that because I think the first one was sort of the the Vita's take on Etrian Odyssey, which has become super popular in the last couple of years. The first one was on Vita. I never heard of this game before. Oh. Well, it might have been one of those unlocalized. Well, obviously, there had to have been a first one. Not always the case. <laughs> well, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, as as kind of low budget as it looks, it... Uh, Maybe it, I'm thinking of Demon Gaze. Maybe that's what I'm... Demon Gaze. That popped up on yeah. my list as I was flipping through games. I think I'm that, getting uh, Dungeon Traveler mixed up with Demon Gaze. Maybe. Uh, but who knows? Uh, <clears throat> Did you ever buy um, a copy of... Class of Heroes 2? No. That seems like the type of thing that you would have bought. Last physical released game on the PSP. Really? Very limited edition, yeah. 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 My PSP collection is pathetic. Well, we know what's going to happen soon, then. <laughs> no, I, I sort of jumped into it for a little bit not that long ago. Um, it was like, uh, you know, I, that's when I picked up Maverick Hunter X. That's when I picked up Powered Up. Uh, and I used to have an amazing PSP collection. Like, I used to have an amazing everything <laughs> collection at one point. Uh, and, yeah, one day I'll go back to it, but but right now it's it's certainly not a focus. Um, you know what, Mike? I think that, that kind of takes us to the end of our list. Yeah. All right. So... Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to totally uh, jip any of our listeners who actually want this to keep going on. Uh, so, have you been playing anything uh, worth noting? <laughs> yes, yes. Other than other than Record Keeper and uh, hmm, and that's awesome that you're still playing. That. I know. I well, the, you know what happened with Record Keeper though recently? They just did a big update. Mm-hmm. Um, it costs and, forty dollars to update the no, game. No, no, no. Um, and I started playing it, and i have been getting this feeling for a while. So you're the original level cap on the game was 50. You could get your guys up to level 50 and that's it. They're done. Um, but then they introduced an item that you could get for specific characters to bump them up to 65. Okay. And it didn't, it didn't bump them up, but it let you level them up to 65. Gotcha. Um, there is a huge, huge experience gap between 50 and 51. Like, it takes substantially more experience to get somebody from 50 to 51 really? than it does to... to okay. um, and so around when that level... Uh, when the, the level cap was upped was also around when... If you had been playing it all, all along with the updates, <clears throat> when you started hitting dungeons where maxed out characters were kind of having a tough time like surviving gotcha um so i've i've leveled up a few more of my guys and i'm i'm playing along and some of these dungeons right from the jump of this of this uh, uh of this update are pretty rough and my guys are all in their 50s level wise yeah um and they all have like high tier equipment I, I'm not really sure like there's not much strategy to these games these games are all pretty much about pre-planning okay um, you know you can tell pretty quickly if you're gonna die in a fight because there's not much you can do about it um, so I don't really know like where to g- I, I the the premise of this game is you're going through every single number, numbered Final Fantasy from beginning to end. Mm-hmm. Most of them, we're not even at the halfway mark yet, and I'm already hitting a point in the game where, like, it's kind of tough with, like, fairly maxed out characters. Um, I don't know where we're going to go from here. I, I'm wondering if this is where we're going to get to that point where they're like, now you have to pay, which is pretty fucked up <laughs> cuz like I've put probably 50 hours into this game and you spent nothing nothing well so is it fucked up that you've played a free game for 50 hours and haven't paid anything or is it fucked up that like to continue this amazing 50 hour journey for maybe another 50 hours you've got to invest 499 
oh, it's going to be a substantially more than that if it requires an investment. Yeah. Um, yeah, because it's, it's like a buck to revive your guys every time. Oh. If I start getting killed every few battles, that's going to get expensive real fast. Wow. Um, or it's $5 to draw a rare item, a random rare item. So if I need to really max out my guy's gear and level everybody up and, like, Shit's gonna get real, real fast. I, you know, if they had charged from the jump for this game, yeah, fine. Laying a trap, <laughs> a fifty-hour trap. Well, but, but that's that's the. You, so is you, it, but is it that thing, long? Usually, you've these got, you've gotten so much free enjoyment out of this game, right? You know that you like this game. Yeah, you don't like it just because it's free, right? It's actually a good. It's game. a good game. Yeah, I, I would have one, paid for it. You said it's one of the best Final Fantasy games that's come out in a long time. Yeah, it is. It is. So, like, what for you? At this point, what do you think is fair? What you, what what would you be happy to give to Square Enix to ensure that the next 50 hours of your game is just as good as the first 50 hours. What would you be happy paying? Not much. Because I feel like I have now internalized the expectation that this will be free. Yep. I have even briefly considered like just spending some money on it because I feel a little guilty. Yeah. But if the game forces me to pay to get ahead... That's different. Yeah. Like, if they were going to start charging for, say, the bonus dungeons or something, it would be a little obnoxious, but I'd at least feel like, okay, this makes sense. You know, I can finish the game. If I want to do more than that, I have to pay money. But now the expectation, like... Here's what we're going to ask you to do, Square. We want you to get his money. <laughs> we want you to get my money. Bring this to Vita. Physical release. Charges thirty nine ninety nine for it. No in game purchases. We'll, we'll both buy and, it. And maybe flesh out the narrative a little bit, so it's not just grinding. There you go. We'll, we'll both. Yeah. We'll both get yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. I do that. And bring. And while you're at it, bring Final Fantasy Dimensions over. I kind of want to play that too. What's that? That's um. That's a a brand new, uh, like. 16-bit style Final Fantasy that is on job system that's on um, iOS. Cool. Yeah. Uh, but it's like crazily expensive. Oh. Yeah. It's, it's like a $20 iOS game. Yeah. Well, we are getting World of Final Fantasy on PS4 and Vita sometime Which, next year. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I've seen some shots of that. It's adorable. Yeah, it's I don't cute. know if it's any good. I don't even yeah I don't even really know what what the deal is, um, but anyway so record keeper aside we'll, we'll see I I also popped over to uh, to the the game spite talking time forums which that's the website that I've occasionally written for in the past okay um, to see what other people were saying about this uh, reading people discussing this game was like reading an ecology textbook Ooh. I was like I don't want to play this game like this what. This is this is like a class, wow. so yeah. I I don't know. We'll we'll see how how the legs if there's still legs under this game in a couple of weeks. But um, but the one game that I have been playing that is not any of my repeat customers, uh, Fantasy Life or Record Keeper. Um, I've been plowing through Fragile Dreams. Oh yeah, which. I, I think I need to stop doing post-apocalyptic stuff because it's kind of bumming me out. Um, it, it's a it's a very odd game. Um, it, it did not review very well. It, it got middling at best, I would say, review scores. Um, but it sounded like such a weird, unusual little game. Like, you're alone and you're trying to find out if there's anybody left at the end of the world in this kind of anime post-apocalypse and there's weird like phantom enemies and stuff um, so I- I'm kind of curious to see where it's been going the, the fighting is kind of shitty as, as described but it, I don't know I-, I feel like the fighting in Silent Hill is shitty too and people don't really like well, penalize those games for that, right? I mean, it's supposed to be—you're supposed to be very underpowered in Silent Hill. Yeah. Same, same with this. Yeah. 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 I mean, you're you're using like broken pipes and stuff. And also, I, I I fucking hate fighting in Silent Hill. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Now, when this game was first announced, it was called it was just called Fragile, and uh, I thought that was a great name for uh, a 
for, for a game, and then when it was released, it became Fragile Dreams, and I was like, that's a lot less exciting than just Fragile. Um, and yeah, you're right, it did not review well, but it looked, like, the, visually, yeah. it looked pretty awesome. Now, yeah. in motion, does it does it look as good as the screenshots? Mm, it's definitely... Uh, uh, Ask, asks the guy who has the game on his bookshelf. <laughs> yeah. It, it's... It, It does look good, but you can tell that it's a very limited... You know, there's not a lot of area in the game. Okay. Things are very small. There, there's the, the two biggest areas in the game so far have been two extremely long hallways, mm-hmm. um, which it makes sense in the context of the game. Like, you're going through these underground tunnels and you're just walking from one end to the other. Yeah. Um, I mean, none of this has really bothered me because the it's supposed to be this post-apocalypse and you're kind of wandering and you're just this kid by himself wandering around. So, like, yeah, you know, you're going to fight awkwardly, when, you know. Are you a guy? Yeah, you are a guy. I don't know why I thought you were a girl in this game. He looks kind of girly. Oh, I, mean, I should play this. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you should. You absolutely should. It, it really is the, the Brian Paul... Um, <laughs> the, the, it hits all the Brian Paul fetish uh Let's go through Points. the Brian, Fa- yeah, Brian Paul yeah, yeah. fetish checklist. Ding, ding. Um, uh, no, we're not, I'm not editing this at all. No, I'm just gonna no. Yeah, let's not throw do it up for you. Um, Literally vomit it onto the, yeah. the YouTube. <laughs> um, so, so how long have you been playing Fragile Dreams? I think about 15 hours, and I think I'm pretty close to the end. Okay. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just kind of an odd game. It, it's it's. It has a feel... It, so it's made by Tri-Crescendo, which I was like, are they related to Tri-Ace? Which they are. Oh. They, they they have... I think they're kind of a, a like second party to Tri-Ace. They, they do like the sound for most of Tri... Which is funny, Tri-Crescendo. Yeah. The sound for most of Tri-Ace's games. Um, their, their pedigree is not great. Yeah. Uh, I think they did, they did Eternal Sonata, which... Okay. Actually, that was, yeah, that was supposed this to be really is, good. It's okay. Um, they did the Bait and Kaidos games, which... Oh, yeah. yeah okay. It's sign of, you know... Yeah, well, we didn't have anything else to play on GameCube. Yeah, you know, it's it's sort of like they're not hitting anything out of the park, but, yeah. you know, passable games. Uh, there's something else that they did that was kind of a dud, though, I think. But anyway... Um, so, because I was, I was wondering, like, this kind of felt like a game by an untested studio a little bit. Like, I could see the, the bits and pieces of what they were going for. Sure. And, uh, like, recently the, there was a, a character kind of died, and he was somebody that, like... Kind of died. <laughs> he died, and it was kind of odd. <laughs> okay. Because he... Well, actually, no, I could say kind of died from the context. He... You hadn't seen him for most of the game, and you just kind of find him in this location dying, and there's no real explanation of what he's doing there or what his connection to this location is, and your character, like, throws a big fit, like, no, you can't die, and then he dies, and it's mm-hmm. sad, and it's like, what? I feel like I was supposed to have more of a relationship with this fellow. Um... Yeah, I'm. I'm wondering. It, it it all has a very like ephemeral feel to it too. Like you're you're kind of wondering, is this kid crazy or is he dying? Like is he hallucinating all of this? Like how much of this is real versus how much of this is kind of in his head because he's alone and just kind of wigging out, um, you know. But there'll be other characters that will acknowledge some of the weirdness, but not all of it. And it's it's very. It sounds like this should have been called the Mike Zeller story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is my life. Like, yeah, yeah, in more ways than one. Maybe that's why it's maybe that's why it's resonating with me. I mean, maybe. I I wouldn't I wouldn't say I'm not like living it up. This this isn't like you know when I was playing Smash Brothers and I'm like oh, I'm having so much fun. This is very like um, odd odd little game. Um, but I, I think I'm pretty close to the end, and you know. Today, uh, when I woke up, I didn't feel like diving right into Danganronpa 2. Uh, like I said, I hadn't played games all week, so I yeah. sort of had to uh, make up for it. You know, I was like, boy, what have I what have I picked up recently? What's been sitting on the shelf in the cellophane? Like, what can I just throw into the system for a few minutes and kind of get the essence of yeah. right away? And um, in three games, all for the same system. <laughs> you just cram them all in at once <laughs> and jam the drive. Good luck, broken. Dreamcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
Yeah, so they they were three Dreamcast games. Okay. And uh, and the first one is Stormwind. Or Stormwind. Okay. Yep. The the uh, indie Shoot. shooter. Yeah. yeah shoot 'em up. Uh, which is I a, think I own that. <laughs> it's a beautiful game. Yeah. Uh, and it's I mean, yeah. I mean, they just. Like there's like CG going on in the background of like of, of things like transforming and you're just like oh, I don't know if I can touch that and it just <laughs> the, the game just looks beautiful like I think it's probably I want to throw it out there it's probably the best looking Dreamcast game I've ever played and being one of these like late releases I think it came out in what 2013 or something? yeah oh yeah I mean it's a, this is this just transcended the terminology of late <laughs> release I mean this is this is an this is an indie game this is not right. officially licensed Sega product absolutely absolutely um, but that's these are my favorite kinds of oh yeah uh, of games yeah. Uh, you know I played the Mad Wizard uh, for the NES that was you know came out last year yeah I think I think that one's working its way up my to-do list as well you, you sold me on that one so good it's it's probably my favorite three hours I've spent with a game in a long time being able to play from beginning to end in about three three and a half hours is awesome um, so but yeah Stormwind is it, I, I've been calling it Stormwind because it's S-T-U-R-M yeah um, and so I don't know if that's just like the German yeah, storm I don't speak German so I say Stormwind even though it probably is Stormwind uh, but yeah, what a beautiful game, and it's uh, just very polished for a, yeah. for, for an indie Dreamcast well, game. Well, th- those people that make physical releases, they make indie shooters and physically release them, yeah. they're not fucking around. No. Like <laughs> this, is, this is Red Spot games. Yeah, and yeah. This, this isn't their first one. No, like, yeah, this is... The, the people that do that kind of stuff take it very seriously. This yeah. isn't, you know, some jack-off screwing around on his computer, like... So let's talk about one of the jack off screen around this computer. Okay, yeah. Because the next game I played was Alice's Mom's Rescue. Oh, not. Yeah. So mm. I talked about this game probably twenty. Episodes I almost ago. thought about buying that after you talked about it. And I looked at some. You can you can check it out, and you you'll probably see the same same flaws that I found. Okay, and it's 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 definitely it borders on the puzzle platformer. Um, side of things, which it's more mm. of a platformer, but you know, you gotta find the key to get through this gate and it's there's something the visual style is is very, very plain. It looks like a low budget SNES game. Mm. Which eh, um the animation is very you know, the walking animations are like two frames kind of thing, maybe two or three frames. Mm. And the, the collision detection doesn't seem right. Uh. Like when you pick up keys the keys are about twice the width of your character. They're big keys. Yeah. But you can, if you're trying to catch one on your way down, like when you're falling, if you hit the side of it, like, you miss it. Hmm. It's a big key for no reason. If, if you're going to have the collision detection that specific, then make the key smaller. Yeah. Uh, and then also, my final, my final gripe with it, I guess, is that... Um, I've fallen off so many ledges when I know that I hit the jump button. Oh, you know, so it's not yeah, like if you're yeah. too close to the ledge and you hit the button, like it doesn't register when it obviously should have. Yeah, you can play it before you before you take off and see what you think of it. But again, I think you're going to find that even though the levels might be well designed and the music is awesome, I, I will say that the music is my favorite part of this game. Uh, I wonder if you can rip it right off the CD yeah. or something. <laughs> right. Uh, but it's good. It it sets the tone really well. Yeah. Because um, it's shitty. No. <laughs> music is, whoever did the music is fantastic. Yeah, it's all just like, Ugh, this game sucks. <laughs> yeah. Well, what you might know how to set the tone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's it's and maybe it, this could just be the case of um, I haven't spent enough time with it. You know, certain games. Uh, you know, that doesn't sound like it. The character has no momentum. Like when you're walking and you stop, like stop holding the button, like it doesn't. She just stops. She just stops. You jump and you push to the right, and she just she goes mm. just as much until you stop hitting the right button. Mm. Uh, so whatever. So that was that wasn't the highlight of my day. Uh, I also played. Uh, I hadn't I hadn't really uh, played any imports recently, so I did want to check out one that was uh, easy without much text, and that was the I want to say it was called the Lost Golem. Maybe it was the Last Golem. <laughs> I think it's the I, Last Golem. Okay. Yeah. And it's it is strictly a puzzle game. It almost reminds me of uh, Treasure Toads, uh, Captain Toads. Oh, Treasure Captain Tracker. Tracker. <laughs> Treasure Toads, Captain Tracker. Tracker. Captain Tracker. <laughs> he finds all the captains. Yeah. <laughs> here's Captain Crunch, and here's Captain Hook. Oh man, don't find Captain Morgan first, or you won't finish the rest of the game. Nice, <laughs> nice swish. Click on his toes, yeah. Godzilla. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so the last the last golem, the last golem, Jesus fuck, uh, is it's good. It's definitely it's definitely that kind of Captain Toad sort of here's your stage and you gotta like maneuver your way around it. Yeah. And I think what it is is there's a king following you and you have to kind of clear the way for him oh, okay. and sort of uh, either remove traps and move walls to get him to the exit. And it's it's very basic, but it's it's well done. Okay. Uh, I like that one a lot. And then the final game I played was um, the unreleased, I believe it was the very last game Sega developed for the Dreamcast and never released, called Propeller Arena. Okay. Uh, and it is awesome. The reason it wasn't released was because it... It was was too awesome. (laughs) You didn't support the Dreamcast. You don't deserve this, you shits. A little of that. (laughs) Um, The interface and everything is like crazy taxi. You pick what character you want, you know, and he's got his own jet, and he's you're flying around, and it's like these big... um, I want to say arenas, but they're like wide open areas with with boundaries, of course, which sucks. Every time you hit a boundary and it forces you to turn around and go back into the fighting area, you're like, just give me some more freedom. Uh, but it's just yeah, basically it's just a, an, an arena shooter where you're in planes and you're trying to huh. shoot down each other. The problem, the reason it didn't get released is because it was supposed to come out right after nine eleven, uh, and there are entire levels based around cities and crashing in the buildings. Oh uh, uh, wow! And it, and that's one of the in the third level, I believe, is actually called like Tower City. Like it starts mm-hmm. up and he, here's Tower City, and it's and you're like oh fuck, now I get it. It's called Tower City. <laughs> Um, Man, nine eleven ruined a lot of stuff, huh? Yeah, you don't hear that enough. <laughs> yeah, don't don't worry about all the lives. Yeah, that ruined. <laughs> worry about the video games that never came out. It's the real tragedy. Yeah, and it's it's a really good looking game. You can tell Sega really. Um, I mean, not, not that they didn't have their shit together from the beginning, but it's a good looking game. It plays really well. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, you can get it from. Uh, I actually considered buying a shit ton of them and selling them on eBay because people are selling. People are on eBay that no one's selling a complete copy because obviously you have to do, make those yourself. Yeah. Um, but people are selling like ripped CDs uh, for like a hundred dollars, right? And it's just mind-boggling. But Retro Game Labs, I believe it's RetroGameLabs.com, is uh, selling. They they basically they they they. they Create the whole package. You know, they print up the labels. They make a they make an instruction book and everything. And it's like it comes sealed, and it's oh, wow. very cool. And cool. It's not terribly expensive. None of their games are. Uh, I believe, I believe the conversion rate because they're I believe they're European based. Okay, uh, Brit- it must be British based because all the money, everything you buy from them is in is in pounds. GBP. Yeah. So you have to do the conversion before you buy. Because you're like, yeah. oh, 40 bucks, sweet. And you're like, oh, $75? Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, um, that's a big difference. I want to say I want to say that each game is roughly the equivalent of about 35 to $40. Okay, that's not too bad. And they, they do have some pretty cool new things for the Dreamcast. Hmm. Um, they do have Half-Life for the Dreamcast. Oh, yeah. They have, just recently, they have Day of the Tentacle for the Dreamcast, which um, is coming nice. in the mail. Nice. Um, is that the original version, or the... The, is that the a port of the PC version? Uh, I can only assume that that's. <laughs> you didn't even look. Nope. I don't care. No. I just like it's these weird, interesting yeah, things yeah. that like no one else has that I'm obsessed with like picking up yeah. when I see. Uh, they also had um, for the Sega CD, uh, Cheech and Chong's, not Cheech and Chong's, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, Penn and Teller's. <laughs> Cheech and Chong's would have been a better game. I know. But it's, what, what's it called? Penn Teller's. <laughs> Like not it probably time or it probably wouldn't have been a very uh, <laughs> dynamic game. <laughs> Cheech and Chong. Yeah. Uh, Penn and Teller is whatever the Penn and Teller game it is with uh, with all the yeah, mini games yeah. on it. Uh, with, there's and of course the famous yeah. mini game is uh, Desert Bus. Desert Bus. <laughs> you just drive <laughs> for like 18 hours. Uh, that's hilarious. It's just like a straight line too. Yeah. 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 Um, but the but 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 the bus. Pulls to the, I think it's the left. It yeah. pulls to the left a little bit, so, so you, you can't just you can't just push that auto button and leave. You have to hold it steady. You do. Uh, people have played it. Oh yeah, yeah. They do it yeah. for charity a lot, like yeah. every year or so. There's some group. Yeah. That, and so when you get to the end of, I don't even know how many hours it is to cross the country. Probably like twenty hours, twenty five, thirty hours. Well, it's not the whole country. It's it's like uh, it's some specific. I think it's from like Austin to Las Vegas or something. But it's or, like yeah. a significant number of hours. Yeah. It's like I want to say at least fifteen hours. Yeah, something it's like that. Something atrocious. Uh, when you get there, you have, 
next you have you to turn to go back, back and do yeah. it again. Um, <laughs> which is awesome. Thanks, Cheech and Sean. Uh, yeah, we love you guys. Yeah, no, uh, yeah. Pen, not Pen and now. Teller are awesome. But so there's a, reprodu- a reproduction because that game never came out yeah. either. Uh, and so you can actually play it on your Sega CD now. Nice. That's on its way. And I picked up a Snatcher reproduction because I figured. Didn't you own the real thing? Oh, I do. Because so I'm insane. Because I'm literally. Yeah, this insane. is the first time I've started to wonder. Yeah, I've gone. <laughs> so, so at work things have been really slow, and when things are slow at work, I don't make much money. Yeah, so, so obviously. So I had I had curbed all of my purchasing, like immensely. I hadn't been buying anything on eBay or Amazon. I canceled all my pre-orders. Like I was just like in a little no spending money bubble. And then things turned around and got better, and I was like. <laughs> Yeah, all right. bets are off. All bets are off, and uh, and, and I'm broke again. <laughs> but nice. I've got some cool shit. Yeah. Down. So uh, yeah, check out Retro Game Labs. Check out uh, my favorite uh, reproduction site is USB Reproductions. Uh, they've got some cool new things on up there. As check well. out the compulsive behavior definition on the American Psychological Association website. <laughs> check out my picture there. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just Brian. Yeah, totally. But uh, it's like a candid shot. It's like you come out of the bathroom or something. Yeah. Um, and then just two more things that popped up this week. Uh, if anyone, if you had ever played Journey before on PS3, by I've that game company, I listened to Journey. Nope. Oh. Nope. You've never played Journey? No. By that game company, you know the game I'm talking about. It's people. They made Flow, then Flower. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, Journey. I have played Journey. You have. I have a little bit of it. Yeah. Okay. It's only like three hours. Yeah. Long. Yeah. I got bored pretty fast. Did you did you do the digital download of that, or did you buy the box? I played it at somebody digital? else's house. Okay. Because uh, I had bought it on mm-hmm. PS3, and for PS4, it just got released, re-released, one of the little updated visuals, uh, and it's free, of course. For uh, Sony's been really good about that. Like they're like, here's a bunch of games you probably already played, but if you paid for them, they're free for you. Oh, that's that's nice. Yeah, uh, and but it's totally, if you haven't played Journey, Journey is one of those like very uh, moving experiences. Uh, everybody does it a little bit differently. Don't watch anybody play it. Just sit down. For the first time on your own and do it however you want to. It's very, very cool. Uh, like I said, three hours long. You never have to play it again. And if you can play someone Just else's copy, it away. even better. Uh, so that's cool that that popped up. And also Bastion is on sale right now for like okay. $3. And uh, that's sort of still relatively new for PlayStation owners. It was mm. on 360 a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, but we got it only within the last six months, Yeah, I think. that's that's another one that's on my to-do list pretty soon. Yeah. That's, it I seems pretty cool. Because what's... Who is it? Is it Super Massive Games or Super Giant Games? That's what it is. Uh, they they made that in Transistor and both games got reviewed ridiculously well. Um, I started to play Transistor and it wasn't really for me, but Bastion always looked like it was right up my alley. So I'm, I'm excited to play that. I spent the three dollars. I'll get there eventually. <laughs> uh, nice. And the backlog—it's a struggle. What do you? Uh, you know, I'm going to be playing Danganronpa. What are you going to be playing? Yeah, I'm going to finish up Fragile Dreams. Yeah. I'm kind of busy this week, so I'm I probably will have just enough time to do that. All right. Nope. Cool. I think that's that's definitely I think that's it. it. Yeah. 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 <coughs> wow. Yeah, we ran kind of long today. Well, I, we didn't get started right away. I was sort of a mess when Mike showed up. <laughs> so. All right, well, hopefully we're, we'll be back um, recording this Sunday, uh, hopefully with yep. a guest that, that you may or may not have seen before. Uh, it might just be us. Who the fuck knows? But uh, but thanks for tuning in. Uh, like, subscribe, share, whatever buttons are below this video. Hit them all. God, except so for, except for the thumbs down one. Yeah, don't. The thumbs yeah. up one is better. Uh, somebody, somebody did the thumbs down on the TJ video. Really? Yeah. Does he have enemies among the he must. Juggalo hood? He must. Must have been must have been a Juggalo hater. So Bastards. Yep. So only thumbs up, please. And subscribe and share. Uh, we will be back. I don't know. I'm gonna stop eventually, talking. Eventually, yeah. Alright. For Gaming Without Pro, I'm Brian Paul. I'm Mike Zeller. And we'll see you eventually. Eventually, yeah. <laughs>